Hey everyone, welcome back to the podcast. Thank you so much for being here. I'm excited for my guest today because it's something that is that's something I've been interested in for a very long time. And even though I consider myself a very spiritual person, it's a topic and an area that I don't know anything about and have always wanted to know about it. And I just read his book and it's fantastic. And you guys are gonna love this guy and what he has to share with us today. His name is Don Jose Ruiz. Is, he is the international best-selling author of The Fifth Agreement. As a Toltec master of transformation and modern-day shaman, he has dedicated his life to sharing the wisdom of the ancient Toltec through his books, lectures, and journeys to sacred sites around the world. Other books include Ripples of Wisdom, My Good Friend, The Rattlesnake, I love that. And The Wisdom of the Shamans, which is the one that I just read and just think it's so great. But welcome, Jose. I'm so happy to have you here. Thank you. Thank you, Karen, for having me. Very honored and grateful to be here with you. Yes. This is very exciting because, like I said, I... I really do consider myself a very spiritual person. I've always been in touch with my spirituality. I've traveled the world. I've had really cool experiences with many different spiritual leaders. But shamanism is something that I was just, it's like I couldn't grasp really what it was about. And if this is a shaman, a doctor, is he a healer? Is he? And so you really cleared that up for me in your book. So I appreciate that. (laughs) But please, it's just... For, for the audience, can you give us a brief description of what exactly is shamanism? Well, there's many points of view of shamanism around the world because it reflects the infinite, what everything is born from. And that's why we in the Toltec Christian call ourselves artists. Artist means Toltec. And it's about being nature. When we begin to learn from nature, it's because we begin to learn from our consciousness, from the things that make us happy, for the things that make us unhappy, for the things that make us, you know, like, really open our hearts. And when our mind is consciously dirty, our mind is not, our heart is not open because our mind gets in the way because we're going against nature. But once we go and support nature, we begin the healing things that are everywhere. And that's a reflection that we see ourselves. So when we see ourselves as life everywhere, there is no more doubt that what we're here to do, we're here to just enjoy this beautiful dream, this beautiful gift of life. And what gets in the way? Well, the point of view of, you know, how we should be. The point of view of wearing a mask, of sacrificing the thing that stops us from seeing our true self, which is nature. Because I believe that no matter if you're male or female, we're a part of Mother Earth. Yeah. Because we're, we're like a plant. That's a human body that feels, feels emotions. So we're here to take care of this plant. So when we begin taking care of the love of our life, which is this plant, which is this life, everything begins to you know, unravel because the selfishness point of view gets over. So the shaman, you know, it's just a word made up, you know, because that, that word really... What really means for me, it's a service, the one who's a service to Mother Nature, because it's not only about men, it, it was the machismo that make everything, you know, blinded in this world, that, you know, that do not embrace a femininity. So when we make the perfect equilibrium with masculinity, femininity, it's life itself, because we're creating ourselves. So this is what shamanism it is, to let the sun come out of you. Ah, oh, that's so beautiful. I love it. So, and when you say nature, like, do you... Do you mean like the trees and the sky and anything that's outside? Because I just feel like we're so removed from that in today's world. Yes, absolutely. And when I mean nature, I mean life. Mm -hmm. You know, it took me to lose my eyesight for a few weeks to understand that I'm no different than the plant, than the trees. Just because we move, we get an arrogance of important that we humans are better than anything else. But no, we're equally. So when we wake up to this awareness, we're the same as the animals. We're the same as the plants. There's no difference. The only thing that makes us separately is that we are here to take care of nature. That's why we have a mind. But, you know, we use the mind against ourselves. We use the mind against life. So when we do that, we're not in clean consciousness until the moment that we wake up and we know our own light, our own divinity, and we begin to see it like the Buddhists say. We see the, the divinity in everything else. So this takes the blindfold away. So it just leads us to common sense. If we do good, we feel good. And I do bad, I feel bad. And, you know, the message is everywhere. They ask me, where do you learn this, like, this powerful verse, this powerful quote? I go, Abraham Lincoln. Oh, <laughs> Abraham Lincoln? <laughs> because he spoke his truth. He said, I only have one religion and one religion only. If I do good, I feel good. And if I do bad, I feel bad. He was looking into himself, not in the outside. So when we all begin looking into ourselves, you know, 
Where do we go against life? Where do we go against ourselves? What is the mission that we give to the people we say we love with all our hearts? If we like it, we continue, but if we don't like it, we can change it and be of service to bring positivity into this world. And that's what shamanism is all about. Mm -hmm. I think there's probably a lot of people too that if they're religious, that shamanism was probably something that was on like the, the oh, what is that? Like that doesn't, but when you talk about it, to me, that's, that is God too. Like that, I, I just said to my daughter the other day, cause she's, we were talking about religion. And I said, I remember when you were so little and you started to say to me, what is God, mom? I don't understand. Like she, she was like probably five, four maybe. And she was going like, I think she heard it at daycare and she's like, well, what is God? And I said to her, I said, it's like mother nature. I said, it's everywhere. It's this, what you see out here, it's, it's beauty, it's nature. And, and about a month later, and I'm telling her this story, like literally a few weeks ago. And I said, I said, then one day I said, it was about a month after you asked, I said, we were driving up on the hill and there was this, and sunset was happening. And I said, the sky was so beautiful. And she's in the back seat, and she said, that's God, isn't it, mom? And I was like, yes. <laughs> like, isn't that beautiful? I was like, that's so, to me, that is. It's, it's, it's nature. It's that, it's that energy, the, the cycle of life that, to me, is God. Yes, I love that. Thank you for sharing that, because yeah. it's beautiful, because the little ones are in touch with the divinity. They because are. They are. You know, and, and to see that beautiful sky, just to see the peacefulness that it, it, it brings, they can identify themselves in that reflection. So I love that. Thank you for sharing. What yeah, I know. I just, it just came to me, so I had to share it. So in your book, so let's talk about how does one start to follow the path of the shaman then? Is that what you would say? Like follow the path of the shaman? Yes, yeah, so or follow the light. Follow, follow the light. The or whatever in your tradition or in anyone's tradition is about you know stepping up and yes. in reality we is, we're done living in suffering when we don't want to be victim anymore when we want a transformation in our life and we don't depend on the outside anymore because now we respect the love of our life and we're ready to do anything for the love of our life so this is the shaman path when we begin taking care of this beautiful loved one and it's about unlearning and learning all the bad habits all the negative habits that we go against this loved one all the lies that we believe that we punish this beautiful being and when mm -hmm. that happens, you know, we begin to be skeptical. And that's mm -hmm. the fifth agreement, to be skeptical, but learn to listen. I'd be skeptical that. in a big position. No, it's not to believe our own lies. Like you say, I have a bad voice, I cannot sing. Is that really true? The humans really have a bad voice, you know? It's just point of view, judgment from the outside. But when you let your voice inside, it doesn't matter if you're in tune or not. Just to let that light out of you, to feel that beauty out of you, it's just perfect enough. And then in time, you know, one practices the... The, the, the art, you know, and, and the more we practice the art, we become masters of that, what we practice of. Yes. But the beautiful thing is to not hold back. So it's about, you know, opening our hearts, the shamanism, when we begin to let go of what stops us and only we can know. Can you explain the dream that we all have? I think that that was such a great way to explain it to people. Like what you're saying is how we have these dreams of who we are that aren't true. It's just a dream that we've created. Yes, and especially, you know, this dream that we live on when we are born to it, it's already been born, like, let's say, 5,000 years of history. So when we were born, we get chopped down some domestication, some history of how we should act, what we should be, what, what gender we should express ourselves with. And, you know, we have conditions. Mm -hmm. So then we begin, you know, following the dream. We know it doesn't feel good in our heart, but we go against our consciousness. We go against, you know, we, we start even bullying ourselves. You know, forget about being bullied. We bully ourselves in that moment to close our own heart. But it happens a moment when we say, you know, that's enough. I have a dream to share. And, and it's the moment we begin to unlearn because, you know, that dream in the outside doesn't feel good to me. And, you know, it's nothing bad to people dreaming that way. I don't go and work against people who dream that way. It's just that I have to be honest with me. So I begin to unlearn dreaming in that way so I can open my heart. Or in the other way, I can just sacrifice the rest of my life and get irritated about everything and be mad about everything because how dare they be happy if I'm not, they have to sacrifice too. So this is the dream that we live upon, the dream of the planet, the dream of, of suffering, of, of wounded people that they don't, they close their heart and they open them, close it in heart and they call that normal. And it's not normal. We're meant to just live with open heart. And uh, this is our true nature. And we're here to unlearn. So when we say our dream is when we wake up and we cannot go back to sleep because we consciously awaken. And that's what they paint in the third eye. Some mystical schools, some 
um, beliefs, they paint a dirt eye on the human uh, forehead. And that's just a mythology, a, a, an expression to say that we wake up, that mm -hmm. our mind is wake up to not go against ourselves anymore. So the painful thing is when we put us up in ghost town in a life that we don't belong there anymore, when we already dream of something else because we're not um, mastered in uh, detaching because we have guilt, shame, and to punish ourselves But the moment that we truly wake up and we see our dream and we see ghost town dream that we don't belong there anymore. It's like a resurrection of life, a resurrection of embodiment coming in the same life where we drop the human form, the old way of living, and we wake up once again to open our heart. So now we have the memory, and this is the prayer that I do every day. May life protect me from myself. May I not take something personal and punish the love of my life. Now I begin to have witnesses about everything it is because we human we can have so many justification and excuses to not detach from a way of life. Yes. But when you love somebody 100%, when you unconditionally love somebody, you will give them the freedom. So if we love ourselves 100% unconditionally, we should give ourselves the freedom too. And that's the freedom to live our dream because one day we're not going to be here. Why wait to be in a casket to live what we have to dream or let go what we need to let go of? Don't you think too, when people aren't living the way they should be, their true self, loving themselves unconditionally, it manifests in so many different ways in somebody's life. Like either they're going to attract things that aren't good for them, people that aren't good for them. They, they develop illness inside their body, whether it's chronic health problems or I really feel it that there's a connection there when if you're suppressing that part of yourself and you're not being, you're not living with an open heart, things start to happen. It's like universe is trying to tell you something. Yes, absolutely. We begin cursing and magic intent behind the negativity is really a curse because we begin hurting ourselves. So everybody that loves us in seeing hurting ourselves, we're hurting them too. And this is the way that humanity dreams about manipulation. And that's the dream of the victim, the dream of suffering. So when we wake up knowing, you know, that we're powerful, we're powerful with the intent, even if they were believing in lies and suffering, our our power is so strong in that way too, because where there's equal light, there's equal darkness. So the beautiful thing is when we start controlling our poison and when we feel it, you know, we're gonna feel it, but is it really real? And this is the moment that we don't bite the apple. We feel it, you know, we get tempted. We, we can take it personally, but we say, you know what? I take my life so personally that I don't want to participate in this way of life anymore. Then we begin to unlearn because my teacher always says, be careful with your intent to save because you're powerful, even with your negativity, your intent is powerful that you might curse yourself and be the scorpion that sting yourself with his own stinger every day. And that's the mind that we do. That's why the fifth agreement is very powerful and liberating. When you begin being skeptical of your own poison, when you begin being skeptical of how you hurt yourself because the unlearning now happens. And that has to be because if we're not aware of how we're hurting ourselves, how can we ever change? But when we see it and live in honesty, now we look ourselves in the mirror. So it's not about changing nobody outside of us. It's about being responsible to change ourselves. And this is a service that is enlightenment. Many people think that enlightenment is that, you know, that rainbow comes out and, you're, and Bambi comes in and you don't have to worry about your problems anymore. No, enlightenment is when you are aware of life and you're witnessing this even inside of you. You take care of your nature and everybody who has a garden knows that once you get a garden, you work on it every day. Mm -hmm. And that's the human mind too. And the body feels every day what's being put into it. But the moment that we begin strong with the intent, we begin to unlearn how we hurt ourselves. And, you know, many people don't, really congratulate themselves of how much work they have done to not believe in lies anymore. Because one day, have a bad day, they can hurt themselves with that bad day. But when you really congratulate yourself for everything that you left behind that was hard, you know, you can do it again and again and again. You just have to com get comfortable in the discomfort. And that's what yoga is all about. Yoga is about getting comfortable in the uncomfortable things of life. It's not about making positions in the body. That comes, that comes later in life when you're comfortable, you know, in your own skin. But when you become at service, it's because you're ready to let go of many things. And intent can go both ways, like you said. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think it's one of the hardest things to do is to realize that you're in charge that the, the, and to quit blaming the people around you or your circumstances and take that responsibility and realize this is about me. I can see this. I can choose to see this how I want. I think that was one of my biggest lessons I ever learned in my life was I can choose to 
be upset. I choose to get angry. I choose to have, you know, interpret these things in my life either as negative or as positive. And as human beings, like you say in your book, we're really addicted to being the victim and we're addicted to suffering. So can you explain why that is? It's because this is the dream that we're born in. So, you know, our parents, they domesticate us, their parents domesticate them and their parents, and it was a big chain, a big lineage, you know, and, and sometimes, you know, they did their best. But the beautiful thing is that time changes. It's like in electronics. We can stay, we can stay in the time of the cassette and the Walkman or the first even iPod generation. But though so many viruses have existed that they, you know, they touch those devices that they keep, they have to keep making them more modern, more modern, more modern, so those devices don't get those viruses. It's exactly with our story. It was stay in the past, those stories had so much corruption in it, so much superstition, so many things that separate us from reality, that if we didn't look at them with the mirror and honesty, how can we ever change? So when we begin looking how we are programmed, no matter how our parents live or their parents live, it's not real anymore. What is real is how are we living right now? And we can complain about our legacy, you know, it's because my parents did this, and parents that, hey, you don't like it? You have the ability to change it right now. Because the little ones, they learn not what we tell them, they learn how we live life. So the moment that we begin changing and, the, and changing our program, you know, we're giving a beautiful inspiration to the little ones. Because I remember when I was young, and the shamans were so unhealthy. And you know, I believe that. I begin getting unhealthy too until I get the epiphany. Hey, if I really love my body, I have to walk my talk. And that's when I begin to learn how consciously I wasn't aware of it, but then I became aware of it and I had to let go so I can be consciously clean in my mind. Because when your conscious is not you know, clean in your mind, you feel heaviness, you feel dirtiness, you feel that you're not in impeccability of your life. But when you tackle that and you're honest with yourself, you do a cleansing. And that's what the healer is all about, making a healing in itself. And everything changes. The point of view changes. And you don't even have to pro uh, program or think about tomorrow because tomorrow will come knocking at your door. You're not going to knock on its door. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about where this wisdom comes from, because this isn't just something that you're just pulling out of nowhere. <laughs> this has been passed down from generation after generation. So can you explain where, how you came into this wisdom? Well, this wisdom in uh, family history, we go back like six uh, humans, like my great grandfather, his son, his daughter, my father and me and you know, generations. But you know, this history is really hum human history. It's not only about the Toltec. When we talk about Toltec, we're talking about the modern Tokens of today, the artists of today. And every religion, every mystery school has its own art, its own shamanism, and its own experiences. We just call it different names. We may do different rituals, ceremonies, but at the same time, we honor the truth. We honor the sun. So this is ancient wisdom. It's common sense. If you go against yourself, you know, it's common sense that you have to unlearn how to go against yourself. And many people have mixed many traditions, many theories, because the beautiful thing is about feeling it. You feel the negativity inside your mind, but or you also feel the positivity, and they're in constant duality. Lies and truth are in duality. The beautiful thing is when you step up to the plate, into your mind, and take that responsibility that many people are afraid of, like you say, and we take a chance, we take a stance, because we're done with suffering, and how we express it to ourselves and unlearn in our own way, then we have a new book of revelations to share, the revelations of how we overcame ourselves. And could you imagine that every mind speaks up their voice and stops the self-bullying, the self-abuse, is the moment that humanity will stop the complaining of suffering because, you know, complaining is an art too. Mm -hmm. Complaining that stops us from doing. And the moment that that dream becomes eliminated from our program is because we have the respect, the self-respect to not abuse ourselves anymore with the word because like the Bible said, first that was the word and the word was with God and the word is God, which God is creation. So with the word, we create any story and could you imagine having the awareness that you can create any story I know. To, yeah. to give to yourself and to the little ones? And if you wake up having a story, a foundation of suffering, you become aware of it, then you can stop telling it. You can wake up from that dream because this is what we believe. This tradition is really about dreams. And we're dreaming right now. Life is a dream and it's a strange illusion. It's mm -hmm. a strange dream how people go against themselves. They live in suffering and they hold on to their suffering. And this is what is being passed on by generation generation. This is why the world is like it is, because there is no respect. 
But the moment that we begin respecting ourselves and it's happening, it's because the suppression of the Divine Mother is gonna end. And of course, I'm talking about the end of machismo. And that's what I've been speaking about in my, in my conferences lately, because you know, machismo is the biggest illusion that suppresses mother. And you know, even women do it to it themselves because it's not about a gender, it's about suppressing the human race. And when we suppress ourselves, we're suppressing the divine mother earth. So when we wake up, this is end because we make peace with everybody because we all are equal. But divine mother is the body that we carry. So like a little angel, we hold her high. Yeah, wow. I, I, after reading your book, I had to ask myself, you know, what are the stories I'm telling myself? Like, of course, we're, we all tell stories, right? So it's like, I had to really take a good look and be like, where am I telling some bad stories in my life that I need to let go of it and change that story? And you had a number of different things, and we won't go through all of them, but in your book, you kind of take the person through steps that can help you to let go of these stories and help you to reconnect with mother nature. So let's, can you share some of those with us? Like how, how can a person that's listening, who's like, yeah, I, I tell these stories of I'm suffering and I need to get reconnected to mother earth. How does a person get, even get started? My first favorite thing to do is grab that person by the hand and take them to a mirror and just let them see their eyes, let them see their face. Let them see, you know, the space between everything in life that happens between the story and their mind. Then I want them to close their eyes so they can see and hear the bigger mirror, so they can hear their own voice. And in that voice, they can hear the one who's lying, the one who's victim, the one who, you know, wants healing. So when they begin hearing that voice that wants healing, the one that take everything personal, the one that is injustice and everything, listen to this person. Listen to you. Because... Who else is going to tell you what you feel that you need to let go of than you? And this is honesty coming. Now, imagine that you pray to an angel and you're praying to that angel to take all those things out of your life. And then I said, okay, if you're praying, then who's listening? You said that the angel will listen if you pray, didn't you? You're the angel. It's time to answer your prayers. It's time to unlearn and take that life away from all these lies that you believe in because they're just tempting you. It's time for your will to overcome the temptation that you give to yourself so you can break yourself from a curse. And just imagine, when you break this curse, you're no longer gonna pass it to the little ones. You're really cleaning a lineage. You're stepping into your power. And many people are afraid of this. And this is why I said sometimes, sometimes when people ask to be our apprentices, they don't know what they're asking for. Their mind doesn't, but their heart does. And I respect their heart because this is what we're here to do. The mind, it's like the one who's on stage performing for the heart. That's the audience. Mm. If you don't like what is being played in the mind, the heart will tell you. And now it's time to listen to the heart, to purify your mind with the heart. And just remember, we human, we have so many justifications and excuses to keep holding on. Yeah, we do. When you're holding on to something, is it really true? Ask yourself, but no one else has to know. Only you know because you cannot lie to the I am, which is the eye of God, which is your eye the center of the universe. So from this point on, one can continue in ghost town until they really know that they don't belong there anymore because now they respect the mirror. And one day they'll have the epiphany to wake up because the mirror is clean and we have woken up. And this is what I mentioned about the resurrection of the embodiment of love. That's why I like taking people to the mirror because you know, our mind's a mirror and it's yeah. the altar. So wherever we go in life, there's no time to waste. There's no more envy, hatred, you know, put ourselves down because life is too short to continue this way. Let the dead bury the dead. We are alive. All those thoughts that are make us unhappy, let the, let, the, let, the, let the wind go. We will feel them because we're not afraid of them. And I say to everybody, life gives us problems because we believe that we can overcome them. So we can believe in ourselves. That's why everything is about, in life, is about strengthening our faith our faith to ourselves. And then, you know, we work so hard in ourselves that, you know, it's time to let go and be like the elders. And if you speak to an elders about, you know, dramatic relationship and talk about jealousy and envy, they say, what are you talking about? Oh, I'm so lazy to deal about that because it's just a waste of time. Because mm -hmm. we let the humans do not know how to love. They know how to manipulate because they manipulate themselves with their story. The moment that we don't manipulate ourselves with our story, 
our life is going to completely change and now we're not gonna attract somebody who abuses us you know somebody mm -hmm. who disrespect us because now we respect ourselves and now we're gonna share heaven with that person that's gonna come into our lives yeah oh, i love that and i've i've witnessed this in my own life exactly what you're talking about and I think a lot of the time we, we wait until things are so bad or something big happens that we, it's like in that moment you have to make that decision to let that evilness go or whatever that fear is and take the other path. And it's unfortunate that we wait until we've got to that rock bottom place because we can do this now. We, like you said, we can go and look in the mirror now and ask ourselves, what are we lying about? right now what's not serving us now and change that and i think that that's very powerful and i think it has you know when we look at health and weight loss and all the things that we talk about here on this podcast all of those things are great the science the nutrition the dietary the supplements the medication all of these things have a piece of the puzzle but it's when people are missing this piece, whatever that is for them when it comes to spirituality and just being more in touch with the energy of life if you the more you're in touch with that i think the faster your healing gets so much faster it goes on like you know really fast speed when you finally bring this into it and i think a lot of people don't know how to they don't even know where to start maybe they never went to you know they've never had a a, a religion or they've never even talked about energy or their spirit or their soul or mother nature anything that we're talking about here today it could be super foreign to them but when they hear it, there is going to be this like recognition, I think, because we mm -hmm. all know it inside, don't we? Oh, yes. And it's about respect. Yeah. It's all about respect because we can have all the theories. We can be beautiful to our temple, clean our body, you know, be 100%, you know, healthy. But if we don't clean our mind, we'll become disrespectful. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm 100% vegan. I, I love the vegan lifestyle. I love, you know, the whole culture of it. But, you know, I, I'm not like a military person that, you know, that imposes like a conquistador or someone else's belief because mm -hmm. that will push them away. I tell you, when you begin living this way, it's contagious, especially losing more than 100 pounds and seeing how I lost a lot of age and become happily and everything I do and even start running, you know. If I start imposing things to people that I know, they will like, you know, irritate, get irritated, push me away, but I don't do that. I, I just let them respect how they live life. But I tell you, it's contagious. Some of my friends have become vegan now. Some people are beginning to lose and take care of their bodies because nobody's, you know, chugging down their throat. It's about seeing the, the, someone happy in the outside. And this is what the beautiful thing about transformation happens when you do it for yourself, not to be seen for validation. You're really, you know, putting a ripple into the river and it's making a lot of ripples of love and wisdom because we're changing the world by changing ourselves. Because, you know, exactly what we were talking earlier, how negativity can be contagious, also positivity. So when we just respect everybody else, we can plant the seed because the soil ground would open like a mud to us to plant our seed. And the seed just comes from our rose of just being ourselves, throwing our aroma, but the winds will come and the winds will get people's into ears and thoughts and belief. And you know, we don't even have to speak to them, but seeing the change that we have in life is so contagious. Even when you have the heart completely open and you go to a coffee shop and you have a big smile, you know, person who has gone through a difficult time a difficult evening and they see that smile you bring something to them and it's like what the hummingbirds do the hummingbirds collect nectar they go to nectar to share the nectar and the aztecs they all believe they believe that the hummingbirds were the messengers of the gods because they bring the nectar wherever we go so we have two choices in life you know impose the nectar to people just to get validation and be seen and be upset about it by right? you not accepting my nature, you know, or just be completely in love with life and grateful to life that you got that ne nectar and you're living through that nectar. And then you pass wherever you go in life sharing that nectar. And that's the illumination that happens because you take care of your garden, you take care of yourself. So that is contagious. And this is what's happening right now in humanity. Grandma told me before she passed away that we will see a return of Divine Mother. And the return of Divine Mother is everybody taking care of their garden. Okay. And I've seen it very beautifully in a fast track that, you know, plant-based uh, is helping lives, is helping lives and, you know, also helping little animals. And the humans are waking up. The kids are waking up, you know, that we don't have to do things like we did before. But it's not about judging the ancestors because they did their best. Mm -hmm. But we keep evolving. So that's one of the beautiful things about life. 
is to honor life, especially the love of our life. Mm-hmm. I mean, losing a hundred pounds, that's a, that's a congratulations. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. Besides your diet, because I mean, like you said, every, every, there's many, there, every diet works, right? Like you can find evidence that every diet works, whether it's vegan or paleo or keto, or, you know, it's really about feeding your body good food and finding what works for you. Was there though a mental shift that had to come with that when it was time for you to lose the weight? And when you lost it, did that bring up your intuition, your uh, spirituality? Did it help with that once your body was healthier? Oh yes, absolutely. Because the body was the the body was happier. Not only the mind, but the body was grateful to me that I make a change, and mm-hmm. I could feel the gratitude of the puppy. It's like when you begin taking your puppy for a walks and walks after walks after not going for a walk at all. It's so grateful to you and it's excited to go for the walk. And this is the point of view that I begin seeing my body like like a puppy, separate than my mind, because my body is a whole living being separate than my mind. And when I learned that I was abusing the the body, the puppy, it broke my heart, and especially. It made a, a, a point, like, you know, took away my little puppy. My little puppy went to puppy heaven. But in that moment, it gave me the most beautiful gift because it let me know that my body was a puppy. And I remember because I had a, 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 a scar tissue in my stomach that I had to go to the doctors. And they had to, like, um, they, they were going to open me up. But, you know, they, if I said if I change my lifestyle, that it would be completely okay. So in that night, I had an epiphany dream. I, I woke up and I saw us humans in the hospital room, you know, like if we were in, in the glass house, you know, we were just cheap. We were just being abused by putting all these medications, putting all these foods that we don't need. And, and, and I said, okay, my consciousness has woken up because when I woke up, I saw my body like it was trapped in there. So I began liberating. Even the morning when I woke up and I, I saw those, those sugary drinks that was part of my health, I said, like, okay, it's time to unlearn because my body doesn't like it. So I begin having my taste bud come back. I begin having my, my, my liver, you know, and my heart, you know, losing all these, all these fats. And I begin to feeling better. And, you know, it was just about changing my diet. I didn't need all those medications that, that needed other medications. And people, some people say, well, you're not like, you're, you're supporting doctors. Of course I'm supporting doctors. My family is medical. But, you know, when we take care of ourselves, we're helping the doctors also. They can be in time at their home because they deal with broken bones. They deal with, you know, ne- neurologic things. And there's other things, you know, but if we can help them by taking care of our body, this will com- completely change. Mm-hmm. And, and it's about listening to the body what one has because some medication was also giving me sickness. So I begin on learning and depending and labeling my body to what feels good that I, in little words, I begin even working out. And then I begin doing things that I didn't do since my teens and early 20s. Now it's so funny because when I go touring, my brother who's three years older than me, they, they say to him, you must be proud of your son. And you no, know, you know, it's me and I, and I just joke about, you know, it's about taking care of your body. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, in your book, you talk about, there's two little things that I just love that I would like to share with everybody. Cause I think they're also, you know, I think looking in the mirror is such an awesome step. Um, the other one that you talked about was finding something in nature that, draws you that you pick up and you take home with you yes yes i i i love this because you know sometimes we're walking we're, we're going through an epiphany a, a big transformation and let's say you know one of the big transformation that i that that i had was uh my 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 my, my stepmother who who passed away two years ago but i asked her if she if i had her so her so support and her blessing to you know do my my teachings in which we begin doing this, this, this month. And she said, of course, you know, of course I, I will. And she passed, you know, so I was, I felt a little bit ouchy, but at uh, the same time honoring her, but one of my walks, I've been getting walking and, and one of her power animals is the hawk, is the tiger in the hawk. So when I was walking, I, I saw the hawk singing. And when, and when I looked down, I saw one of the feathers and I picked up the feather. So when I picked up the feather and brought it home, it was, you know, like a, a, a blessing from, from mother, from life that I'm in the right path, that I'm in the right direction. And this is what I love about life. When you have something going and you make an intent and you make a whole effort to change and then you pick something up that in your pathway of nature walk, it's because divinity is there watching. And that's the beautiful thing about faith, to never doubt your heart when you want something, when you want something for the best of your love of your life. Because when you do something for the love of your life, it's because you're pouring some water, which is love to that, 
to the cup and it will begin to overflow and overflow. And you don't care if it's overflowing because that's what you're meant to do, to create, to do. It just pours that love into your being. And then your body is so grateful that, you know, everything is a vacation. Mm -hmm. I love it because you're saying in the book, if you're walking along and you're wanting to change something in your life and you see something that it draws your attention, pick it up, but then put it back down and keep walking and see if it pulls you back to go grab it. So I'm going to do that. I was like, that's it. I'm going to go do that. And, I'm, and then if I get brought back to it, I'll pick it up and bring it home with me. And I think it was, you put your intentions into it, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. But when you put your intent, you put a part of it. And the beautiful thing is about life. How many things that humans have put their intent into and then put it out there and, and help somebody else. And it's everybody a collaboration of love. And this is one of the beautiful things about transformation. When we change our world, we don't even see the bigger picture. We're helping to change this world to live differently. And the only thing we have to do is just work in our individual self. And that's authentic because we cannot change somebody outside of us, but we can change ourselves. And that's the inspiration right there. It is. It is. Absolutely. The other one that I liked was the, the finding of the totem animal. And that one really resonates with me because I, I, because you said there's, you can kind of think of animals three in your life that have been kind of uh, prominent. I couldn't think of three, but I definitely have one, which was the snake too. I'm not the rattlesnake like yours, but when I went through a really big transformation, when I was in my early twenties, I was down in Boulder, Colorado, and I was going to school and I was doing a lot of body work and receiving a lot of body work. And I was like, I was crying every day and I was, all this stuff was coming out of me, all this deep seated pain that was inside of me was coming out through these sessions. And it was this major transformational period for me. And suddenly everywhere I was running into snakes and I was <laughs> dreaming of snakes. And sometimes there'd be big piles of them. And sometimes there'd just be one. And I was just like, why am I, why are snakes coming at me? Like I'd go walking and there'd be a snake in the middle of my pathway. And that happened like three times in a week. And I was like, this, what's going on? And that's when the when I first read about totem animals was back then, and I was like, "That's my totem." And and to me, it meant it's the shedding of the old, right? That they shed their skin, and and that made so much sense to me. Yes, it's it's amazing how very simple it is when when we hear a totem animal like shedding its skin, and 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 that's one of my five animals, a rattlesnake too. And and then one day, I imagine you know, saying to my friend, if they see me coming as a snake, they will see a big mountain because we're programmed to keep our dead skins, you know, but how yeah. natural it is just to let it go. To yeah. return it back to life. I love that. Thank you, sister, for sharing it. Yeah. I, love, I, love, I love when people find their totem animals because it's a big inspiration to see themselves and their courage and like, okay, let, let's do this. You know, like I, I love the jaguar because mm -hmm. the jaguar home is the mind, the jungle. So when I'm the jaguar, I'm taking care of the jungle. I'm taking care of the mind. And, you know, it just feels the inspiration behind it, that the spirit of it, you know, merges with you because you, you build trust. Yeah. And when you build trust, you know, you feel security. And, and, and there's no mistrusting anymore because you trust yourself 100%. And mm -hmm. that's when you find your ally, when you find your totem animal. Oh, I love yeah. it. Oh, I love it too so much. And so for those listening, your totem animal may just be an animal that you feel extra connected with or that like me was a reappearance and I just feel connected now and I understand what the snake symbolizes to me. And, uh, you know, Jose says in his book, my interpretation of an animal may not be the same as your interpretation of an animal, but he does give examples of certain things. And like, I, I definitely went through a period of time where all I kept dreaming about was bears. And mm. you say in your, in your book, it's like bear, your brother was a bear, his totem animal was yeah. bear and it's protective. It's mm -hmm. protecting. Yeah. And I thought, okay, yes, that makes sense too. Right. Yeah. Um, and I also feel an affinity for the cougar. I always just like mm -hmm. the cougar to me is just, like an amazing, so I'll have to look it up. I don't know what it means, but I, I've, I have this connection with cougars. I always have. So I'm going to have to look that one and see what it means. Yes. That's a powerful one. I, yeah. I love that. It's, it's, it's the similar as the jaguar, but in, in a different land. But mm -hmm. yes, it, that, 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 that medicine is like the greatest ally because it's always there. And in the stalking energy is always right. stalking, cleaning up the mind. So there's no little parasites running around. So the cups can be oh. in big paradise and the cup is the body. Ah, 
Yes. Okay. That makes total sense because I do, I'm always observing myself and my thoughts and how can I, you know, be a better person? How can I change this? Am I not seeing something that I should be seeing? Like I'm constantly analyzing things. So mm-hmm. that makes sense. Yes. Oh, I love it. Okay. So what are you up to these days? You're speaking. I know you're traveling. He just came back from India for a month. So are you like, do you travel all over the place speaking to people? Oh yes, I, that, this is my heaven to get to share what was shared with me, yeah. and I like to wake up in different different times. And and like my mother says to me the other day, says, "Aren't you jet like?" Yes, I'm jet dreamy because yeah. I like to see the positive and everything. But yes, I, I'm getting ready for my for my book tour. The, the medicine bag is coming up February fourth. So on Tucson, I have my first event, and then we're gonna be every weekend from now on going to Colombia, Italy, United States, Mexico, and and I'm just happy to get to share. Sometimes I don't even see my calendar because I want it to be a surprise where I'm going to be next. <laughs> Are you going to come to Canada? I, I believe so. My, my friends are doing something in Vancouver, Canada. Oh, perfect. That's only a couple hours from me. Oh. I will come see you. I would no, love it, to. Do you travel would, with your family or just you? Or? I, I travel with my family and also by myself. Yeah. Amazing. And then you just do speaking events. Is that what it is? Or are you holding like workshops? Yes, I, I do speaking events and I hold workshop with my brother, Miguel Jr. And, 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 and then I go to India with my brother, Ramakrishna, that is uh, also from the Indian tradition. And yes, I, and, and then with my father and, and then with my, my friend, uh, sister Heather Ash Amara, we, we do, we, we travel as a topic community. So, wow, you're and, living and, a good life, Jose. Oh, yes. I'm, I'm very blessed to get share what it was shared with me. And, um, you know, I, I don't have children on my own. I have puppies, but the last time I was in Teotihuacan, that's the place where we speak in the pyramids of Mexico. One of the vendors that I grew up says, you know, when are you going to have children, Jose? And I said, you know, I turn around and, and see all the participants who, who came, who I, I spoke around the world and came to the pyramids. I go, these are my children, you know? And, right. and we come, when, when we are in service to, to bring wisdom to the world, you know, we see everybody as, as our children. And this is something that I'm, in my step of learning, like my stepmother's teaching was, imagine that you can love everybody like they were your own children. Mm-hmm. And, and that's the dream of Divine Mother. So that's what we're going for. And before we get there, you know, I, I really want to share the, the, the story of how machismo is not good for the humanity, that yeah. we need to eliminate that so the suppression of women will end. Because until that happens, you know, the, the Divine Mother will be suppressed. But when that gets eliminated, you know, it's ready to, to honor her. Wow. I, I haven't, you know what? I've never been to the, to, the, to the pyramids in Mexico. So is that where you mainly go down in Mexico? Is there? Yes. We, we go to Teotihuacan. We go to a few places like Oaxaca and, and Yucatan area, but, but uh, Teotihuacan is our, is, is, it's our, it's our home. It's our home. So it is, this, eh? this, this new year coming up is going to be the last, the last time that my father's going to come. He's going to retire. It's going to be the last time. So we're going to be celebrating the end of the year with him. Oh, wow. That's amazing. I have, I have a very special place in my heart for Mexico too. I, I used to live down there when I was in my twenties and I would go back and forth to a little place called Yalapa. Have you ever been there? I heard about it. I haven't been, but yeah, yes. it's, it, it was, it's re- when I first went there, there was no electricity, no roads there. You had to take a boat to get there. And it was this little tiny inlet. And it was like, that transformed my life. And that's really where I, became, I really started to become a spiritual person where I started to get in, in touch with energy and different things. Like I, I met the coolest people would come through there, amazing, amazing healers. And I have a really odd connection with the Weechel Indians. Like mm. they, I, someone actually told me I was a Weechel Indian in my past life. I don't know if that's true, but somebody there told me that, that was this like clairvoyant person. She said, you're so drawn here because in your past life you were a Weechel Indian. And I was Mm. like, Oh, okay. But then after that, I had this thing happen where the chief of the, the Weechel Indians on three different occasions separated me from these ceremonies. And one time he took me over and did his own ceremony with me on the cliffside where he did this like cleansing thing. I I mean, this is 20 years ago. So I I just remember standing there and he's singing and he's feather and we have to throw stuff into the ocean and yeah. And then he invited me to go up to their village once for their three day peyote ceremony, which I did not do, but 
I, you know, the fact that he singled me out and invited me, like all these little weird things. So I, I kind of think like, maybe that's true. Maybe I was a Weechel Indian in my past life. Oh yeah. And, 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 and true hearts see true hearts. They honor yes. the, when your heart is open, they will honor that heart too, because we, we, work, we work for the same boss. Yep. And, and there's a beautiful thing about this tradition. The Weechel art is so beautiful. The greatest, oh. the great artists, great channelers. They are. They are very it's, they're amazing. They're in their in their tribe. Yeah, in their in their it's so old. Like their religion goes back so far, and I I just feel like you can't find that anymore these days, right? Where it just goes back, and so does shamanism. I mean, you say it went back six generations, but the stories you tell, I mean, how old are those? I mean, yeah. thousands of years old. The, the, the beautiful thing is that all those stories they're just words, mm -hmm. but the essence behind them is from the infinite. Right. And that's what we really are. It's, it's like the language of the soul. The essence of the soul gets trapped in the words that will communicate to one another and ripple in this life. But what we're really bringing is the old information, the old wisdom that's infinite, that is silent knowledge. There's no mm -hmm. explaining it. They're just like the beautiful thing. That's why we call ourselves artists, Toltecs, mm -hmm. because uh, the ways how we can express it, what we feel inside. And that's mm -hmm. an art itself. Mm -hmm. We really have to regress to progress, I think, in today's mm -hmm. world. Go back to the old ways in order to progress, right? Yes, there's something to learn, but to unlearn. Yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I want to just thank you so much for coming on the show. It was so inspiring. Tell everybody where they can find you and what you have to offer. Well, thank you, Sister Karen, for this information, for this, for this, for this opportunity to speak. And you can find me at miguelriz.com. That's where we do events. But uh, I like to share um, art and, and quotes and, you know, my heart in Instagram and Facebook. I, I just, Perfect. whenever I have something to channel, I just put it out there. So Perfect. you can continue following me there. And I'll link to all of his social media pages in the show notes so that you guys can just click on it and start following him. Because I, I want that. I want the inspiration. So I'm going to start following you on Instagram, Jose. <laughs> Thank you. That's great. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. Uh, thank you for the work you do. Thank <laughs> you.